We're here at Hogue Cellars with Co. Din. Uh, Co. Five years ago, we were here, and you were showing us the new bottling line with screw caps. Five years later, give us a little perspective on what's happened with Hogue and uh, the whole issue with screw caps. Well, five years ago, we it was all new. We we'd done some experimentation. We had proven to ourselves that we liked what we were seeing, but uh, and we made the decision to go to screw caps on a commercial scale. Uh, five years down the road, uh, we've had. Uh, five years of wine in the bottle, and uh, it's, it's panned out as good or better than we could have ever expected. So we're really excited about what we're seeing in terms of how the wines are holding up and, um, and really developing over time. Uh, today we just did a, a tasting of some older wines, and they're beautiful. Talk to me a little bit about production levels. How many uh, cases per year are you, are you putting under screw cap, and what percentage uh, of, those, uh, for, of your total production? Well, right now we're putting about... 80% of our wines under screw cap and at this point we're at about a half million plus or minus uh, of production per year so that equates to you know 400,000 cases of wine under screw cap at this point. Okay. Uh, any customer feedback that you've gotten uh, pro or con? You know uh, it's surprising we haven't the, the biggest complaints are uh, bizarre ones like uh, I try I couldn't get my corkscrew to work on your a bottle of Hogue Chardonnay, and uh, there's no cork in it, so of course it wouldn't work. And uh, so we haven't, it's been surprisingly uh, slim. Uh, you know, sometimes a, a screw cap doesn't open exactly properly, and they're concerned, but uh, it's other than that, it's been, uh, it's been great. I, I think back five years ago, we were at uh, Taste Washington, and uh, it was right when you guys were just getting ready to bottle uh, under screw caps. And one of the little uh, things that they were giving away was a Hogue uh, uh, corkscrew. And I, I thought that was kind of funny. I thought, well, they're just getting rid of them. Maybe. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. There is, we still have a few wines under cork. We're, we're seeing if there's some alternatives to those right now. And, in fact, we bottled our first uh, Genesis Red under a screw cap. The Syrah 08 is in a screw cap. It's going to be out in the market here shortly, so look for that. That's uh, really exciting. I think we found and determined that Red Wine's age just fine under screw cap and uh, we're looking forward to seeing how that wine tastes uh, 10 years from now. It, it, it seems that when you guys started five years ago down this path you were kind of alone. There were a few smaller wineries in the Northwest that were doing it but very limited production and you guys had you know hundreds of thousands of cases out there. Now we're seeing more wineries like Pacific Rim in particular and a few others that uh, are doing most or all of their production in screw caps. So you guys are kind of the pioneers in that respect, I guess. Well, at our size, yes, we were. There, there have been some wineries in the Northwest and in California who had worked at a smaller scale. I think we took the plunge, and that was great. I, I, I'm glad it succeeded, and I'm really glad to see other wineries jumping in. It's still, it's still a, uh, a, you know, a gamble, I think, in, in some people's minds. And it's a tough leap to take as, in far, as, in, as far as how are their consumer their consumers going to respond. Uh, I think the people who have make, made the leap have been uh, pleased. They're certainly happy with wine quality, and um, time will tell if, if they switch back. But uh, they're brave souls. I applaud them, and, uh, and uh, the, the, they're the kind of people we need in the Northwest moving, moving the industry forward and, and uh, into the modern age of winemaking. I presume you've seen no dip in sales or anything is, that you can relate to screw caps. Oh, absolutely not. We've seen uh, the first year, in fact, we watched it very closely, and we saw nothing in terms of decrease due to screw caps. Uh, our sales have been growing like the rest of Washington State, and our we're in the right categories. Uh, and um, I think we're seeing similar growth based on category uh, as other people are. So I'm not seeing a, an effect due to the screw caps. We're, we're seeing generally very positive responses, if any. One, one of the things that we hear is uh, an issue with reduction uh, because of screw caps. Can, first, can you explain what reduction is and then also what your findings are in that aspect? Well, we, um, we know that wines, when they're, when they're kept in a very oxygen-free environment, can sometimes get a closed almost stinky characteristic, and that was a big concern about screw caps since they are such a tight seal. Uh, we adopted the type of uh, screw cap liner, the seal of the screw cap, that lets a tiny amount of oxygen through, just like a very good cork does, and we're seeing that the wines are developing beautifully, and we're not seeing an issue with 
uh, reductive characters or reduction. Um, it's really important for the wines to be perfect when they go into the bottle, and that's our job, and we, we make sure we do it well. And uh, at that point, if they're good when they go into the bottle, uh, we're finding that they'll be good when you, when you open them up uh, six months, a year, five years out down the road. So uh, we've, been very, um, we've been very happy with the fact that that's not an issue with us. And I guess to that aspect, has your winemaking style had to change to, to accommodate screw caps? It's, um, it's caused us to make sure we do everything more tightly. I think we work all the time at getting better at what we do in order to compete. Everybody's getting better. Uh, we grow better grapes. We use more care in the winery. We get better at doing everything we do. And that, that feeds into the fact that the screw caps need a perfectly made wine. And once they're the perfectly made wines in the bottle, the screw cap uh, protects it perfectly. So um, we're, we're aiming for perfection. We're getting closer, I think. And the screw cap certainly is part of that. It's aspect. absolutely helping us in that regard. We tasted some 2003s just now, and I was surprised at how good they were because, frankly, 2003 wasn't my favorite vintage. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your, some of your perspectives of, of those reds in particular? Well, I think it's uh, the, these are wines that were put under screw cap in our terroir series, which is uh, Tasting Room and Wine Club, uh, five years ago, the 03 vintage. And the 03 vintage was uh, a warmer year and big wines, uh, maybe wines that might age rapid, more rapidly. And I was, uh, uh, I was curious. We'd, we'd done the experimentation. We'd seen one or two wines that have been under screw cap that long. They would aged very well. And... Um, it was a chance for us to sit down and taste five different wines, uh, different wines, different varietals, Limburger, Sangiovese, Syrah, Malbec, and Cabernet, and see how they all aged under the screw cap. And I think uh, I was very uh, pleased to see they were developing nicely. The tannins were integrating. The colors were still vibrant. The fruit aromatics and flavors were a little closed at first, but really blossomed in the glass. And... Uh, uh, everything I'd expect from a very well conserved uh, five-year-old premium red wine. I was I was I was very happy with the way they, they they showed today. So, in that aspect, would you say that screw caps can almost be like a time machine, if you will? I think they can. Uh, I don't think they they don't freeze anything. The wine does develop. The wine develops um, with the very tiny amounts of oxygen that come through, uh, just like it does with a very very good cork. And there are no surprises. I guess that's the, the key is there's less bottle-to-bottle -bottle variation within the case. And there are not the crazy random uh, issues that we ha used to have with corks and the, and the taint um, uh, flavors that are associated with some corks. So it's more predictable. And finally, uh, what do you miss most about uh, corks? Um, nothing. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy.